what's good y'all it's will ross back at it again with another video so we're gonna check out the wrestling business is booming by wrestling gifts just off that title alone i i may, i have to agree i may have to agree with this uh this uh sentiment i wouldn't say it's obviously getting back to where they used to be uh, back in the day and even in like the ruthless aggression era or the attitude era i don't think it's to that point but i do think more fans have come back to watch wrestling as a whole um there's a lot of good things to uh sink your teeth into on the wwe side of things and the aew side of things as well um i think more people are starting to get into these shows man so we're gonna check out the potential reasons of why people are coming back i know for wwe the bloodline storyline has been obviously one of the best things wwe wwe has done in so long i mean i think uh i want to say a couple weeks ago the ratings for the uh the smackdown episode where uh, they started off the show with the whole tribal council meeting bro i think it it reached like over three million viewers bro three million viewers within that first hour i believe like the ratings have been pretty good especially when it comes to the bloodline storyline like it's it people have been quite interested and there's other things that people have been interested as well especially with wwe pay-per-views or the ple's have been fantastic for almost a year now so more people have been going to that um on the aew side of things there actually has been some things that uh people have looking forward to uh they have their uh, show at wembley a Wembley Stadium this year, later on this year, they already sold out over like I believe 70,000, 60,000 tickets. So that should let you know alone. Like, people are definitely interested in wrestling if it's selling out of venues and events like that. Um, so we're gonna check this out, see some of these reasons. Appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel, man. Let's get right into this one. Dave Meltzer a few days ago said wrestling is the hottest it's been since 2001 and it really got me thinking for most of us for most of our lives as post attitude era kids no matter how much fun we've had watching wrestling in our lives after a certain point all we ever heard was about how wrestling is dying wrestling sucks now and how there will never be another wrestling boom ever again but here we are in 2023 and yo the wrestling business is booming Batch. the wwe is currently on fire and is doing things that just a few years ago seemed impossible i mean just think of how dead the wwe felt in 2019 that shit was hard to watch. Think back to how dull their product was a few years ago, how meaningless everything felt, how bad their product could be at times. It was something that showed in the numbers. And I, I want to make another point. They've been selling out weekly shows. Monday Night Raw and SmackDown. They've been selling out shows. I remember a time they weren't doing that. I, I remember a time the shows weren't selling out like that. They are actually selling out shows weekly which is crazy, 12 to 15, you know, roughly 12,000 to 15,000 people weekly. That's insane on the WWE side of things. It showed in the revenue, and as a result, it showed in the fan interest and the general morale towards the company. But fast forward now, the difference is night and day, and the magic is kind of back. And without a doubt, the catalyst to all this has been the bloodline. Roman Reigns and the there bloodline has officially become a money printer for the WWE. Facts. They have made a storyline that has been running now for over three years into an ever-evolving story arc that just keeps getting better and better, and now has reached the point where it's doing numbers that don't even make sense anymore. Mm -hmm. Roman Reigns along with his cousins together they are the biggest draw in wrestling when yep. they pull up to Smackdown viewership jumps up bloodline segments reaching 3 million viewers Not is slowly becoming the norm and the impact that they are having on social media views and engagement are breaking records for wrestling and that's incredible I want y'all to understand that we live in it's rare that you get a 3 million viewership on any wrestling promotion in America bro it's rare but the fact that this storyline has been so damn good and so consistently entertaining for so long that people are actually, they may not even watch the rest of the show. They may not even know what's really going on, but they're in, interested in what's happening right here, bro. I don't know what to say other than this is really bringing some excitement back to wrestling. 
and not like i said not it's not only just this there's other storylines other feuds actually some good in-ring wrestling at least on the uh ple side of things and i think that's what's really been helping wwe for the most part is the ple's have been out of this world good <laughs> it's fucking insane saying that about the main roster in 2023 and this has just stemmed into everything because creative as a whole in the wwe is so much better now and it might sound crazy but i think the success of the bloodline is why we now have a product where there is such a focus on storylines and story building once again like yo you tune into raw now and we have factions running around we got beefs that matter again we got heels finally getting nuclear heat i don't know about the brock and cody beef that don't really matter that that's, that's just thrown together still entertaining matches though that's one thing that's saving them the matches is good and we do got some <laughs> dom as the new nxt north american champion oh he's gonna be a menace on monday night raw <laughs> we have faces that the fans actually want to cheer and we got two people who are clearly the faces of the company the importance of having a top heel like roman reigns running this ship followed by a top face like cody rhodes it cannot be understated most importantly because of all of that people finally care again and once creative is hitting and people actually want to tune in to watch everything falls into place in 2023 so far attendance for shows has reached levels that the company hasn't seen since 1999 Ooh. getting tickets for raw and smackdown at a good price these days is a mission every week the wwe is consistently selling more tickets uh -huh, than they have in over that. 20 years it's not unusual for tickets to drop and then instantly sell out Damn. and just still be resold for crazy amounts and the wild part is Fans are so hungry to go that they're buying the relisted tickets that are like double or triple uh -huh. the original price. Just a few weeks ago, SmackDown sold out Madison Square Garden, the world's most famous arena, and the MSG show was the largest gate in domestic SmackDown yeah. history. Now when Raw and SmackDown comes to your town, it's a hot commodity, it's a big deal. People actually want to go out and watch the show live. And this just trickles into the pay-per-views. What the company has done with pay-per-views over the past two years has been nothing short of amazing. Facts. Once again, pay-per-views actually matter. And once again, pay-per-views are must-watch television. Facts. Five years ago, there was nothing more dreadful than it being pay-per-view night. And it turns out being four hours of Backlash 2018 and you're just sitting there depressed. Like, mm -hmm. why am I watching this? But now with the help of Nick Khan and his strategy, pay-per-view nights, they're, they're movies again. The Rumble and SummerSlam are now stadium shows. WrestleMania mm -hmm. is now a two-night event that just sold out two nights in Los Angeles. Yep. A WrestleMania that broke so many records, including being the highest grossing WrestleMania in history. <laughs> but the most impressive part has been what they've done to make every single show seem like a must-watch show. It no longer feels or just happens. That's why I'm looking forward to SummerSlam this year. I think it's going to be fan-fucking-tastic. It's going to be a great show. It's going to be great. I'm looking forward to SummerSlam this year. I... I may not be looking forward to the Raw shows weekly, <laughs> you know, it can be a chore, but the, I just, it's crazy to say the PLEs hit. They hit. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the, the AEW uh, show at Wimb uh, Wembley, I can't even say it, Wembley Stadium. I think that's going to be fucking fantastic too. I don't know, man. Having pay-per-views to have them, everything feels like it has a purpose. Let's do Elimination Chamber in Montreal, who haven't had a pay-per-view in over 13 years, and let's put Sami Zayn in the main event and have yep. the arena jamming. Bad Bunny loves wrestling and wants to do it again. Let's put Backlash in Puerto oh Rico, the first pay-per-view there since 05, and have it rocking like it's a Bad Bunny concert. Fucking the UK fantastic. loves wrestling. Okay, let's do a stadium show in Wales, and then 10 months later have Money in the Bank in the O2 Arena, which ends up being the highest grossing WWE arena show of all time. <laughs> Pay-per-views are once again must-watch shows with storylines and feuds that people want to see, with moments that actually matter, with stars that people care about. Now when you tune into a pay-per-view, you want to see if Sammy disobeys Roman, if Bad Bunny tweaks, if the Civil Warrior lives up to the hype. Hell, you you want to see how nuts is Logan Paul versus Roman Reigns going to be. Mm -hmm. And now they're going to places in which the fans are thirsty for it. These unique locations that end up shaping the show, leading to this amazing presentation. No one is ever going to forget that one backlash in Puerto Rico or that Back. one Money in the Bank in London or so on. Creative is finally good again, stars are finally feeling like stars again, and as a result, attendance is breaking records, viewership is up and doing amazing numbers, and pay-per-views are becoming actual special events again. 
Love and it. what blew my mind the most was finding out that merchandise is higher than it's ever been in wow. any era. More than the Attitude Era, more than the Hogan wow. Era. The WWE right now is selling more merchandise than ever. Which, Damn. okay, it does make sense. It is easier to access it and order it now than it yeah. was in 1999. But still, it's amazing. You gotta love to see it. Business is booming, us wrestling fans are loving it, and because of that, the world is taking notice. Wrestling may not be as mainstream as it once was, and probably will never be again, but the WWE is in such a good place, and it's so refreshing and fun to see and to be a part of. It's almost like becoming normal to like wrestling again. Like if you tell someone like, hey, I'm gonna uh -huh. WrestleMania, they're not gonna look at you like you're a weirdo. Yeah. Okay, maybe. It's slowly no longer being looked at. I don't even think it's a maybe, bro. Like. You know, bruh, it's ridiculous. You have fucking little Uzi out there performing at WrestleMania. He has a song on his latest album that went number one in the hip hop or uh, number one top billboard named uh Nakamura using the Shinsuke Nakamura theme song, which is a wrestler's theme song. You had Snoop Dogg out there with his own custom belt hosting WrestleMania. You have so many celebrities and entertainers that want to go to a wrestling show and want to meet these wrestlers. That's not even, it's not even, it's like, it's a thing. It's a thing. And that's crazy to see. And it's always been like that, but you see it more on social media. People interacting with actual wrestlers. Undertaker doing a podcast with Tony Hawk. Them wanting to know more about the things he's had to go through. Come on now. Like, you can go on right now on Instagram. Go on your phone. Instagram, Twitter, whatever. And you'll see. You can just scroll. You don't even have to search for it. You can see how many wrestling-related posts are getting loves and comments and shares. Even if it's old-school wrestling stuff. But wrestling-related posts, you can see them trending without even trying. I don't know what to say, man. It may not be as mainstream, but people, more and more people are buying, like not buying into it, but like either watching it again, reliving the memories, or just enjoying what's being shown on television. Like I can tell a motherfucker now, someone asks what I do for my personal channel, I check out, uh, you know, I do wrestling content, I check out wrestling videos, reactions, whatever, and I feel confident in saying that. I don't, I don't feel like weird or I have to hide it. No. This is what I do. This is what I get paid to do. And I enjoy it. So it's it's cool to be able to be in this resurgence of wrestling again. It's awesome. It's a weird and niche little thing. Like, oh, you still watch wrestling? Instead, it's fun again. It's where big stars like Pat McAfee, Logan Paul, yeah. and one of the biggest artists in the world, Bad Bunny, goes yeah. to and just wilds out. Of course, that helps change the perception and brings eyes to the product, and it helps to become more a part of the zeitgeist. The other day, I saw a kid in a Uso shirt, and, and I was shook. I haven't seen a kid wearing a wrestling shirt in public since like 2014. And it's just awesome to see, mm -hmm. because we were there for the dark days, when pay-per-view were drags, when watching Raw and SmackDown every week was depressing, when it really did seem like wrestling was dying and becoming even more niche. I'm not saying it's perfect right now, but it's in such a good place, and I'm so happy to be where we are. And that goes to AEW as well. I mm -hmm. went to Forbidden Door and they deadass sold out the Scotiabank Arena where the Raptors play, the Leafs play. The number two wrestling company did that and they've been doing that whether it's in Vegas or Chicago. Mm -hmm. But this show ended up recording the highest gate in AEW history and they're about to break that in just about a month anyway. Yep. AEW has sold 75,000 tickets in London for Webley Stadium. If I also did check out Blood and Guts. Uh, uh, I did like... A few things on there. I definitely like what they're doing with uh, Adam Cole and MJF. That's actually pretty fucking entertaining. They have something there. It's going to be interesting what they do with that. The old Blood and Guts match, it was okay. I kind of got numb to it. Um, but the crowd there was electric. And I know for a fact, since it's already sold out in Wembley Stadium, this is going to be crazy. I also checked out Forbidden Door. Enjoyed a few matches there. Oh, what not? Show was a little bit too long for me. But once again... The atmosphere there. The atmosphere is fantastic. Um, and um, shit, Collision has been consistently good. I didn't get to check out um, the, um, the the tag match you guys were talking about. Um, um, FTR or whatnot. Uh, having their, their two out of three falls. I heard that was a fantastic match. Definitely need to go watch that. And uh, seeing um, 
Ricky Starks beat CM Punk in the uh in the tournament and the way he did it was very interesting too. They got something going with collision too. So obviously wrestling is definitely has this resurgence with all these different shows and what the stadium shows being sold out. They they're obviously wrestling is 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 coming back to being more of the norm. If that doesn't prove to you wrestling is booming, then nothing will. It's one of the most impressive things in wrestling history from a money making standpoint, from a business standpoint. Yeah. AEW selling 75,000 tickets in London. They're going My to bad, sell at Wembley Stadium. It's going to happen. It's yeah. truly unbelievable. I, I don't care if you're a diehard WWE fan. I don't care if you're an AEW diehard. Both sides are winning right now and we're all winning right now. Yeah. Because AEW is doing great pay-per-view buys, doing great gates, and now somehow doing 75,000 in a stadium, that's what pushes the WWE to do better and vice versa. Uh -huh. Competition is good. That way no one can be complacent in the industry. So screw all that tribalism shit. Let's just all appreciate Facts. how good we have it right Thank now. You, you tune in on a Wednesday for AEW, you're gonna get something crazy like a blood and guts. You tune in Friday and you're gonna get an amazing bloodline segment. Wrestling is booming, the fans are eating, the wrestlers are eating. It's just a good time to be a wrestling fan. <laughs> so in, enjoy it because after all kick. this shit that we've been through as fans over the past decade or so, we deserve this. And it just makes me so happy to see wrestling this healthy again. This literally seemed impossible in 2019. What a time it is to be alive. Hey man, I agree with you, my boy. I'm gonna go ahead and like the video because wrestling gives. Uh, I, I, like, I appreciate his takes, man. I appreciate his mindset in the wrestling community um like he said screw all the tribalism like what you want just like what you want you know what i'm saying if someone likes something more than the other company that's fine that's their preference that's what makes wrestling what it is it, it's subjective you can like and dislike whatever you want but don't trash someone else for you know liking one company over the other i'm not doing that we live in a time period where wrestling actually matters and people are actually watching the product and eat people are buying tickets to go to the shows that's something to be proud of there's something to you know actually care about so let's enjoy it for what it is and you know have a good time man that's that's my take on it man so comment down below let me know how you guys feel about the wrestling business right now me personally i enjoy what's happening on both sides on AEW and wwe and wrestling as a whole people are going to the shows people actually care they're trying to put on the best possible product i'm all for it man so how you guys feel about it are you do you guys think the business is booming like this video uh says it is like the homie wrestling gift says it is or do you think it's all a facade because honestly i don't know i don't know how you can't see it's it's they're doing something right i think it's it's booming and i'm loving where things are going and and hopefully it continues to grow man so let me know how y'all feel about the wrestling business as a whole man but i appreciate all love and support road to 150k and i'm still young speeding youtube wrestling champion world appreciate y'all keeping me see y'all next one peace